hi everybody another fluff reading this one is going to focus on the third tyrannic war or basically the aftermath and what the imperium tends to do about the hive fleet which was interesting uh, because they haven't really talked about that before and it starts with galactic feeding grounds as High Fleet Leviathan continues to coil its tendrils around the galaxy, entire worlds are being scoured of life, and hundreds more are embroiled in a desperate fight for survival. So far, all attempts to slay Leviathan have resulted in death and failure, and the hive mind's inexorable advance shows no signs of stopping. The Great Devourer has sunk its tendrils deep into the galaxy, and thus far it has shown only the first hints of its true strength. Leviathan's encroachment could not have happened at a worse time for the Imperium. For the Imperial Tarot has predicted a time of darkness for the galaxy, unmatched since the bleakest hours of the Horus Heresy. All portents indicate that the arch-traitor Abaddon the Despoiler is on the verge of launching his 13th Black Crusade, and the Imperium can ill afford to leave its back unguarded against a foe as powerful as High Fleet Leviathan, as it turns to face the imminent Chaos Onslaught. The Adeptus Terra has been sufficiently shaken by the constant flow of Tyranid invasion reports to convene the High Lords of Terra. Their rapid and succinct conclusion is that the inroads of Leviathan has made into the Imperium must be stopped at all costs. The Tyranid race must, if possible, be utterly exterminated. The military juggernaut of the Imperium's armed forces are slowly being marshaled to face the Tyranid threat. The Imperium will not submit to the Great Devourer without a fight. Ever Emerging Threats Unfortunately for the Imperium and the other races of the galaxy, it is not only Leviathan that is assaulting the galaxy. New High Fleets are even now beginning to emerge from their cold sleep through intergalactic void. High Fleet Medusa, mistakenly thought by the Imperium to be another tendril of Leviathan, was last recorded feasting on the ice world of Shadrach. High Fleet Moloch's inexorable advance from the galactic north is also gathering momentum as it devoured the Kiltor Sector, and now the Telerian civilization. Perhaps most worrying of all are High Fleets Scalia and Cherebles. Carving parallel paths through the Segmentum Pacificus and Solar, the closest known High Fleet Tyranid threat to Holy Terra. Though the Imperium might have a little time left to prepare its defenses against these ten threats, twin threats. Sam Hain Craftworld is caught in the jaws of these two high fleets and cannot easily navigate a path to avoid one without risking falling into the clutches of the other. None know for sure how many other high fleets still lie dormant within the void slowly approaching our galaxy to wake and feed. Nor are the threats of previous Tyranid invasions truly over. The splintered fleets of High Fleet Kragan are regaining their strength as they feast on the boundary worlds of ill-prepared and defended planets, whilst the galaxy looks to supposedly greater threats. Long dormant remnants of High Fleet Jormungir stir to life, bringing several Imperial worlds to the brink of destruction. Rumors even abound that remnants of High Fleet Behemoth, thought to be slain over two centuries ago, continue to ravage populations and settlements within the Ultima Segmentum, with scattered reports of Tyranid attacks on worlds from Kalth to Macrag and beyond. 
With so many threats emerging from unseen quarters, many worlds are holding back from reinforcing the fight against High Fleet Leviathan, choosing to preserve their forces for wars closer at home. High Fleet Hydra High Fleet Hydra is only now beginning to stir from its eons-long hibernation. It was the Dark Eldar of the poisoned Fang Cabal who first encountered this still dormant High Fleet at the very extremes of the Eastern Spiral Arm. Instead of destroying the invulnerable High Fleet, the Dark Eldar boarded the largest bio-vessels intent on bringing new specimens back to their Cabal's homunculi. However, the Dark Eldar were unprepared for the rate with which the bio-ships awoke, and every pirate that set foot inside one of the living ships was killed butchered by a frenzied tide of tyranids spawned to protect the ship. The remaining Dark Eldar fleet attempted to escape, but for every drone ship they destroyed, two more took its place. Prematurely awakened from its slumber, High Fleet Hydra has accelerated its advance into the galaxy to slake, slack its hunger. A Glimmer of Hope However, as the ongoing Octarian War is proving, the Tyranids are encountering ever greater levels of resistance from their prey. Whilst the Imperium reinforces whole star system, raising thousands of Imperial Guard regiments and dozens of Space Marine chapters solely for the purpose to combat the Tyranid threat, Several Eldar craft worlds have begun to burn entire worlds to cinder, employing ancient weapons of destruction not used in millennia. The Tau Empire, having learned well at the claws of High Fleet Gorgon, are developing new technologies and weaponry to fight the Tyranids, and field testing experimental prototypes to defend their realm. Even the Necrons and forces of chaos are turning their attention towards a foe that is slowly devouring a galaxy that both believes in th that it is theirs alone to rule or to despoil as they see fit. So far, these efforts are, at best, succeeding in slowing the Neviathan's rapacious advance. But it is only a matter of time before the hive mind adapts. With every lost battle, the Hive Fleets create new breeds of warrior organisms and bio-constructs to counter, counter and defeat their foes. Yet, with every victory, another world dies, devoured to feed the insatiable hunger of the Hive Mind. Warzone Valador there have been times when the star-faring biofleets have fallen afoul of warp storms, never to appear again. The splinter fleet of Kraken that was sent headlong into the Imperium by the seers of Craftworld and Yandin had an even stranger fate. Its bioships later emerged from a dimensional rift into the Valador system, deep in Segmentum Solar. The splinter feet had crossed the span of a galaxy in a matter of years. Worse still, it had emerged right in the path of High Fleet Leviathan. When Inyandin's seers learnt of this, panic gripped them. If the biomatter from High Fleet Kraken were to merge with that of Leviathan, the resultant strains of Tyranids would be all but unstoppable for they would combine the genetic secrets of Orc, Eldar, and human alike, dreading the re repercussions that this unholy union would have upon the craft worlds of the Eldar. The Inyandin Council implored their allies on militant Bealtan to intercede. Yet, despite its swift and deadly attacks, even the Swordwind was unable to keep the High Fleets apart. If it were not for a shadowy bargain struck with the Dark Eldar, the paradise planet of Velador, or Durial as the Eldar call it, 
would have been the birth site of a new doom for the galaxy. By using the Fireheart, a Camerite ar artifact of incredible power, the combined forces of the Eldar destroyed Durial in a storm of fire and violence, just as the Tyranids were about to seize their vile prize. In the process, they averted disaster for a time. And that is all of the fluff in the Codex. As you can see, we're going to eat you yum, 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 with fava beans and a nice Chianti. <laughs>